Welcome to the Health Fix Podcast, where health junkies get their weekly fix of tips, tools, and techniques to have limitless energy, sharp minds, and fit physiques for life. Hey, health junkies. On this episode of the Health Fix Podcast, I'm interviewing Shante Golson. She's an executive leadership coach specializing in emotional intelligence. And today we're going to be talking about burnout and how that impacts you and how you can find those signs that something might not be going well in the career department. And let's just face it, it's tough to find life and work balance. And in this episode, it's going to give you some really amazing tips to help you get things back on track and to work on taking care of you. Because after all, she is on a mission to create a culture of self-care in the executive world for women. Let's introduce you to Shante Golson. Hey, Health Junkies, I am Shante Golson on today, and we're going to be talking about emotional intelligence, going to figure out how she got into this career, and we're also going to be talking about burnout, which is such a huge thing that happens with women as we get older. It is a thing. So Shante, welcome to the Health Fix Podcast. Thank you for having me. Well, tell us a little bit about how you ended up finding emotional intelligence and really understanding what it takes to get out of burnout because one of these things these things are just so rampant in our lives right now what what was your story and how you came to it emotional intelligence was a default after understanding what the cause of my burnout was and the ability to apply practical strategies in order to recover myself which actually took seven and a half years Mm -hmm. and so as you know we women professional women have to pursue throughout the burnout we're still working we're still grinding while there's still burnout sitting on our shoulder. So my story persists of I'm being a medical provider, five clinics, managing that as well as staff, Um, having just so much energy going, you know, going and going and going for years and years, decades, actually. Um, And so just one day, one, something just fell on me. I really can't describe it in context to what it felt like, but I could can describe it as a the air being quickly sucked out of a tire. So you're talking about somebody who's been servicing patients for so long. And just one day, the air is just flat. So my day consisted of leaving my home at 8.30 in the morning, returning about 10.30 at night. That's what my six days a week looked like for years and years and years and years. And so as a result, I burnt out. As you can imagine, my uh, the way I help people to understand how burnout uh, persists is look at it from a, a pouring of the picture. So you have water in this picture, and you are pouring, 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 but the got you is that there's never any refills. So in my circumstance, giving to patients, giving to patients, giving to patients while not being restored, no one pouring back into me, uh, then that is what caused the depletion and the, therefore running on fumes. So as I began to understand the red flags, I did not capture it until I began to see my behaviors. And this is where you are cynical. This is where you do not care. This is where you are not functioning your uh, responsibilities correctly. And I want everybody to know that there are six to seven levels of burnout. I was on the sixth level and that's severity. That's almost chronic to where you just don't care about anything. I stopped caring about my personal responsibilities. I uh, stopped caring about my business responsibilities. 
Um, at this particular point, I began to lose a lot of money, quarter of a million oh, this month, this month, large amounts because I was not managing staff. And so then it became a financial deficit. Not only was I mentally exhausted, not only was I cynical, not only was I irritable, not only did I not care. And every time I went to my business, I sat in my office wishing that people canceled. But because I was so um, uh, needed or my reputation around uh, the whole state was high, I always had patients coming in. And so I just one day stopped and thought about how I needed to address this. Because I recall even now sitting in my office turning the lamp on, turning all of the major lights down, looking at my computer while my secretary bring my lunch, buying you, which became a lot of junk food, right? To cope. Sure. And so with that being stated, turning on Netflix, didn't want nobody to bother me. And there were several days like this to where I wish I could go home. Think about it, your own business, feeling trapped, having financial difficulties because you just no longer have air in your tire. And so I began to work on me, but first I had to make a hard decision. I had to either choose my business and everything that came with it or choose me. Long story short, I chose me. I closed all the doors. I laid off. I came in uh, home and I did telemedicine and I could only muster two days a week in serving. That is, I could only muster. So this is deep. This is not something surface. This is like soul plaguing. Mm -hmm. And so I began to work on me. I could not have worked on me through the channels of hustle, the hustle culture, going and going. I, I wouldn't be able to have worked on me. And so from there, I began to slowly plan, create activities and strategies that could help me to restore myself. And the very first thing that I created was a time management system, which would allow me to give instructions to myself by creating what I needed to do and breaking them down so far that it was nothing to think about. All I had to do was, was follow my directions. And if I did not, could not follow my directions, that means that my activity was not low enough for it to be simple. So I began to put time with it. I began to then excel in my energy and my tasks. And then the list goes on and on on how I further recover. But as a result, I've created a three-step system that I now teach clients about and therefore incorporating emotional intelligence because we know by definition that emotional intelligence is all about awareness of me and awareness of other people in my environment. And how do I handle that in a healthy way? Makes sense. That makes sense. I mean, a lot of things you just said resonated with me. I also, same kind of thing, busy practice, just let everything go, had to move home and take care of my dad. And that was the point at which I let things, you know, kind of, I had to figure out what was going on. So, you know, for, for what you're saying, I think a lot of women can, can resonate. And I think the, the most important thing that I'm hearing you say, and I think a lot of women need to hear this is that it is really hard to work on you when you're in the midst of the hustle. And that you said, you said the time you notice, like, if I can't, if I can't take care of it, it's not, if I can't do it, it's, it's too hard. I need to simplify. Tell us a little bit more about that. Uh, yeah. So my system time management system is called the order of organization. Okay. And so it's an advancement of a to-do list. So you start off with the tactical task of identifying what you need to do. And as you learn what you need to do, you also learn what you don't need to do because there's something called busy work. Mm -hmm. And so we often get enamored with the busy work and we find ourselves never progressing towards our target, which is straining and frustrating. 
And so you will create the things that you need to do. We'll simplify it and look at a 24 hour period. You write down everything you need to do. And this is in all categories of your life. I have something called four quadrants, which is your work, your family, community, and whatever else, your leisure time. So we'll look at that, the four quarter quadrants. And so you are writing down everything you have to do in these quadrants. And then what we'll do is we will name each quadrant and we'll bring over the task in their specified quadrant. We'll then break down um, the time that it takes from the very beginning to the end. So for an example, if I needed to go to my PO box, then how long would it take for me to get in the car, drive to the post office, go into the post office, get the mail, come back and return to the office? That's what we need to look at, right? Not just going and get your mail uh, because it won't be measurable at that time. And so if I could say hey, I could do all that in 15 minutes, then I am listing the time per each task of how long they will take realistically. From there, um, I then order or put in order the least time frame of an activity to the greatest. I'll start with the least and then I'll start with the next least, the next least, the next least until that particular tasks, all those tasks are done. Now, the reason why you want to reduce the, the, the task in such a small way is because when you are allotted to do one thing and you complete it, that creates motivation. Mm -hmm. And when you have motivation, you can see yourself going to the next one. And you say, oh, I've got those things done in 10 minutes. That could have taken me an hour some time ago. Mm -hmm. And then it motivates you. Well, let me just keep on and keep on. Next thing you know, you're kind of on this, this, this high, if you will, of wanting to see how much you can get done and or you are affirming yourself to say, wait, I do have strength to get things done. It, it was miraculous when I pieced it all together and there are other components about it that I did not include, but um, I can provide access to this for your guest and, it, you know, however you choose to uh, allow that. But the time management system, the order of organization, that got me going again from a small amount until I began to increase my strength and further beyond that. Wow. No, that's awesome. Because I mean, I think a lot of women, especially as entrepreneurs and folks who have a lot going on, we we do kind of base our day on our to do list. Mm -hmm. And some women, I'm sure maybe you might have felt this way is discouraged when you don't get the whole to do list done. Right. And or the to do list becomes a greater to do list, because as you're going throughout the day, as you're reading your emails, as you're listening to other people, as you're gaining calls, as you're trying to finish up this, that other things are attached to your to do list, which becomes discouraging because you started off with five and now you got 15. I laugh because I, I, oh, I know <laughs> this. I know this. My goodness. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of women can resonate with that. Plus just having a win, mm -hmm. you know, with the time management, huge, so mm -hmm. huge, so huge. So what's next? What happens next after the time management system? Once you, once you got that done? Well, once I got that done and I was able to uh, intelligently understand how it works and the power that it brought back to me. Um, then I began to understand, I began to study myself and understand the root cause mm -hmm. of the burnout because there is never an event or scenario in your life that is, that is, uh, not started or identified first through a trigger. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And let me share this as well. This, this comes up as I shared earlier kind of the symptoms or the signs that I knew that I was going through burnout. And again, wow. I haven't shared all the signs, but one thing came to mind. This was the got you. This was the slap in the face. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Now I shared with you that I have been gun ho, love serving people. I serve children, teenagers, and adults. And so, you know, my particular gift, my spiritual gift is to heal. And with that being stated, one day I was servicing a child and I went out to the lobby to speak with the mother and I was consulting the mother in regards to a balance that she had. And at this particular time, she made a comment to me that echoed for a long time because I had never heard this. I had already always heard that I was uh, nice, always heard that I was helpful, always had been appreciated. And it wasn't the fact that I heard uh, criticism I, because I really don't, that doesn't bother me. Let's just say it that way. Uh, but I knew something was going on with me. So when something is going on with you, but yet you really don't want to believe that something is different about you, then you become somewhat offended, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, while I'm very good at masking my emotions, because that's just what, that's just a part of the professional game. Um, she called me stoic. I thought that was interesting. I know that may not mean anything for anybody else, but stoic, huh? Hmm. So that simply means it reminds me of being like a statue, not letting any emotions in or et cetera. Now, I cannot deny that it's a possibility that I was giving that off because I was doing my best not to show her my pain. Now, here's the got you. Not only was I burned out, but I was brokenhearted at the same time. Mm. At the same time. Wow. So I had to wear this mask, but I also had to climb into that statue just to make it every day, to not cry, right? To not get angry, not to show my frustration and my irritability. And so then that's when the things began to domino effect in a negative way. Hmm. That's hard. That is so hard because I, I can hear, I hear you. I, mm -hmm. I've been there. I've been there. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. You know, especially when you're, you're thinking you're getting married and things of that particular sort. And so I had to heal from burnout and broken heart at the same time. Ooh. At the same time. And when you look at it from a mental health point of view, those are those are two grief components that are very hard. And I'll share with you as well as your audience that when I had that breakup, something died in me. I've always been this go-getter. I had always accomplished things very young. I knew what I wanted to do at a young age. So I went for it. And that's how I was able to accomplish a lot. I, I bought a house in my 20s. I had all the cars I wanted. But something died in me. And when it died in me, all of my air, you know, came out of the tire. Gotcha. And I was deflated. And so walking on fumes plus defa uh, deflated, you can imagine how mentally exhausted, how foggy my thoughts were, how indecisive I were, how procrastinative, <laughs> you know, I was. I understand that's not a word, but I just made it up. It's a good one. It's a good one. It, it captures <laughs> captures exactly what happens. <laughs> and so, you know, I heard the other day on also uh, somewhat of a podcast, this young lady says that procrastination is the assassination of your dreams. And that resonated because my dream was to help heal people from a very young age as a shrink, a medical provider or what have you. And I did it. But this thing now is starting to shred me to pieces. The, the lady that was a go-getter, that would accomplish a lot, that could handle a lot. Where did I go? I literally did a blog post last week in terms of where did my creativity go? Did my career cause me to not be creative anymore because of how serious it is? 
-hmm. working with people who are suicidal, working with people who are depressed and highly anxiety and the, and the list goes on and on. Mm -hmm. And so that took a toll, not the issues that I help because I have a, a, a special gift for those things, but the biggest hurt for me was that I began to resent my business. And that's like your own baby. Can yeah. you imagine carrying nine months, giving birth and resenting the thing that you cultivated? <laughs> oh, it's it's the worst feeling in the world. Having been there, you know, it's the worst thing in the world. You feel like you're turning your back on yourself almost. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then here comes what? All of the distractions. <laughs> all of the depletion, all of the uh, mental exhaustion and et cetera. And that takes a, a toll on your physical body. And so this healthy lady now having to take medication for blood pressure. Mm. Now having fibroids. Mm -hmm. Now having to take medication for fibroids. You know, so medication is it's helpful in its own capacity but, but what i'm talking about is the pressure of the work hustle culture and how it can take a toll on your physical body your mind and your soul and so one of the things that i do in helping professional women is to understand how to incorporate soul care so I have a, a theme, I have a saying that I created. Self-care is soul care. And so as I empower the professional women to thrive, I help them to distress, overwhelm, and burnout by creating personalized self-care routines that lead to balance and a fulfilling life. And that's what's important to me right now. That's my way of giving back and helping to heal. Because I no longer at this particular point desire to do it one on one at this particular time mm -hmm. so you say what happened next what happened next is i identified my tolerance level what i was able to handle and what i was not able to handle and i began to set boundaries for myself and other people and anything that hindered my peace it was not welcome in my life and then that began to allow me to heal further and to understand myself further and to understand what went wrong. There were a lot of things that went wrong. I can list them down, but I had the energy to handle them. But once the energy left, they were too much to hold on to. And so anything that bothers your peace is too expensive. I like that. It's saying. Too expensive. Yeah, it's too expensive. So that's why I have a heart for professional women. Makes sense. You know, yeah. we we can do it. We can have our dreams, but there is a way that we can do it that defeats the tradition of working yourself to death and or not even understanding your stress level. And therefore, especially African-American women, we have this concept that has been passed down to us some verbally, but a lot none un excuse me, uh nonverbal, which is called limiting belief. This is what we seen, although we didn't hear the words that you work until you don't can't work anymore. Mm -hmm. So sometimes we cannot identify our stress tolerance, and it's we can only see it when it's too late. And that's where I come in. I bring strong awareness and helping them to understand how to move from unconscious to conscious, mm -hmm. how to work on, do the, uh, do the work that I teach them about awareness, helping them to move from their existence to the woman they want to become. And sometimes we have to let go of traditions in order to do that, in order to shift that mindset incredibly important to acknowledge the traditions because I think for women that is a big deal for us we're, we're caught sometimes depending on on the age we're caught between taking care of our kids and our parents sometimes mm -hmm. aunts uncles and then a career 
I'm guessing that that's something you see quite often with a lot of women. Yes. Yes. And, and, and also that brings the point that for the women who have raised children and now they're empty nesters, they don't know who they are now. And that Ooh. puts them in a whole nother spin tail. Yeah. And that, so what some for some, they allow their work to be their identity. And then when work isn't going well, they don't know how to find themselves. You know, that's an incredible point right there. Because mm -hmm. I do think when work starts to collapse in and, and for someone that, that say, yes, the children are, are out of the house or they've never had children, it's, yeah, you wrap your whole identity in that. And then when things are crashing down, you're like, oh my gosh, I don't even know who I am anymore. I don't know what direction to go. What, what kind of things would you say to someone who's feeling that right now? What I would like to share with them is that it's important for them to identify who they are. And if they cannot find the positive flair into who they are, I get them to go back to identify where they left themselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we do work from there. They may say, well, 20 years ago, I was this and I was so happy. Then we start there. Mm -hmm. And we help them to identify the transition or, or the journey as to where they lost themselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then working forward to kind of create a new, new identity. Yes, mm -hmm. to reframe themselves, to change their belief about themselves. Creating the, the new belief about yourself is a really really huge, huge, I think, part of emotional intelligence, but also just as of getting older, because, you know, things change as we get older with our bodies, but also life changes, career changes. There's so many changes happening that I do find in my practice and in with myself, it's it's hard to kind of figure out what, what do I want my new identity to be? Where do I even begin? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I actually have an exercise that helps women to identify who they want to become. My value propositions uh, is be, do, become. And so I work through those, those uh, value proposition in order to weave them in and out of what they feel like they are to where they want to be. One of the coping strategies that I teach people is to identify who you want to be. You may not know all of the way, but you know how you want to feel. Mm -hmm. You know maybe what how you want to dress. You know maybe the environments you like that you haven't had an opportunity to see or haven't been to for a long time. So I help them to start in a small baby form to build up to who they can identify. And then we use her, we're going to call her her, the mm -hmm. becoming self. We use her as a means to refer back to when we are having challenges in the present. Would she do that? Would she say that? Would she curse her husband out? Mm -hmm. Because she's in peace. Would she allow her peace to be bothered? Would she assert herself presently so she can be at peace? So I teach all of these components in such a way. And, you know, I've heard over the years, over the 30 years that I've been working uh, in social service and or mental health, that I'm a great teacher. Now, I have previously, I was a literal middle and high school teacher. And I found the students coming to me to talk, not about school, not about their assignment, about life. Mm -hmm. So I said, let me get out of here and, and uh, get back on track. <laughs> <laughs> let me finish up my degrees. <laughs> so, you know, so yeah. So there are a whole lot of strategies that I teach individuals, but the power behind that is teaching them the fundamentals of how to create strategies to be able to navigate challenges in life. Gosh, you know, incredibly Incredibly powerful. And and one of the things you, you said about teaching, you know, I'm kind of like, man, we need this. We need this in like grade school mm -hmm. for for young women and, and men too. I think, you know, both. But in particular, I feel like this message is something that 
you know, unfortunately now for a lot of women, it's, we've gotten to that place of burnout because we're really in probably maybe the second generation per se of, of women that have really embraced working outside of the home. So we're really starting to just learn what, what happens. Right. And I'm like, man, we really need to get this into the grade schools, but that's my soap. <laughs> soapbox <laughs> on that. Have you, have you thought about that in terms of how you could incorporate programs or, or things of that nature in the future? Oh, absolutely. You know, I spent uh, countless years servicing at-risk youth. Mm -hmm. I have always had a heart for the youth because um, there was an event that happened when I was a teenager. Um, I am a, a PK, if you will, so I went to one of the ministers at church to share some thoughts and get a little bit of mentorship. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, I'm trying to think of what it was. You know, I don't I, I want to have sex, but I don't because I know it's it's not godly. You know, can, can you you know, can we talk about it? Can we help? Because I certainly wouldn't go wasn't going to go talk to my mom about it. Right. So right. I thought I could find a minister who I felt that was cool. And the only thing he said was pray about it. I said, what in the, what is this? And so it's something that sparked, it's something that birthed in me right then and there. Because I said, this is not guidance. We need guidance. We need real, practical, realistic answers. And that was the start of working with teenagers when I was a teenager. Wow. Wow. So I've been teaching for a long time. <laughs> You're, you were born to teach, it sounds like in this case, for sure. Yeah, yeah. And so I, these practical tips, these, these, the understanding of emotional intelligence and helping teenagers to understand themselves, help them to uh, grow into someone they can be proud of and, and considering their future presently, because I tell teenagers what you do to today, you will do tomorrow. So with that being stated, yeah, I was well known as the state, the hospitals and et cetera would send all the at-risk youth to me because that's what I was, uh, I specialized in. Wow. Wow. You know, I, I do believe by helping women entrepreneurs who have kids or even, you know, grandkids, I, I feel like we are helping because their, their message is going to come across. Right. And the hope is that they, they also transfer it there too, um, as well. So I, I like the idea of the, the full circle, but now you were saying too, that you're, you've moved from one-on-one -on -one and you're doing group programs. So I'm guessing that you're also seeing families as a whole benefit from the group programs because the woman's bringing what she's learning to the family. I would hope so, because I do teach them the fundamental components of how to look at their scenario mm -hmm. and how to strategize through. And I teach them from a uh, from a component that no matter what the face look like, the scenario or the sound, you apply these strategies that I'm teaching you. And they're able to weave them into their life as they begin to practice. But one of the challenges that women have is unlearning and practicing new information. I let them know that, uh, that mental wellness work is work. Don't think that you're going to talk with me and I'm going to last in your brain the whole week until you can get a hold of me next. <laughs> this is what I tell people. Now, I do actually still see patients one on one um, in a very small chunk of time. I will tell you that because I still, you know, have to maintain the requirements for my uh, license. However, uh, what I've decided to do that is getting ready to launch is to create a membership. Mm. So there are going to be two components. The first is your DIY, do-it-yourself digital uh, courses at your own speed and own time. They're going to be dripped so mm. that you can have time to concentrate, do the work, and learn so that it can build upon the next lesson. Uh, but also the second tier is you also have access to the digital courses, but you have access to me as well. So it would be a eight week live training uh, with me. So I'm taking no more than 12 women at a time and the um, 
four cohorts and I probably will do it only three times a year. Okay. Okay. And 12 women. So, so if you guys are listening right now and you're like, well, I want to get on on this, you got to get going on it. Now, now I noticed that you have a quiz. I actually do because a lot of people ask themselves, is this me? I don't know. <laughs> Let me see. No, it's not me because I'm more, right? I'm more the a, a, B, C, D, or E. But one thing I try to help people to do in this process, you have to be vulnerable with you first before you can be vulnerable elsewhere. Because vulnerability is going to help you to gain insight into your consciousness to have access to the real answers. So the quiz is my way of helping them to see if they are an emotional intelligent woman or are they on the way and also are they a beginner and need to learn further. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And so would you recommend for people who are kind of contemplating your, your program that they take the quiz first to see where they're at or go ahead. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. That's kind of what I was thinking. I was like, okay, the quiz is a good starting place to kind of get moving um, and, and really understand where are you at now? One of the things you had mentioned Shante at the beginning was the seven signs of burnout. And we talked about a few, and I think right now I would love to kind of go over those so that we can really kind of help inspire some women to take, can, you know, take action if they're feeling any of these signs of the burnout. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there are, uh, when we talk about burnout, I'll just follow your lead regarding it because there are, there are seven stages. Okay. But inside of each stage, there are multiple signs. But what I would like to do just for not to be so overly complicated and make it easy, we're just going to talk about the seven signs of burnout. We'll just, we'll just choose seven signs. Okay? okay. So the first one we'll say is exhaustion. You feel constantly tired. Even if you've had decent rest and you feel depleted, both physically and emotionally, but I will tell you that the physical takes place first. This is where you feel your muscles tightening up, your back's on her. You figure out what is going on. Did I sleep different? Did I fall? I didn't know about, <laughs> you know, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And uh, emotionally, this is where you're starting to have a, a pool of energy escape you for no reason. S the simple thought of something that you would normally quickly understand and make a decision, it becomes harder and harder because your brain is foggy at this time. And what happens if we look at the sky and we see a cloud doesn't that cloud our vision to the other side, to the blue sky? Think about it from a mental point. You're cloudy. You're cluttered and you can't see your way. And so you can't think through that. And as you begin to prolong your stress, the longer your stress, the bigger this cloud becomes. Mm -hmm. Well, number two, we'll talk about uh, being cynical and detached. And this is where you can start to feel cynical about your work and even lose interest in things that you once enjoyed. And some people ask me, well, isn't that somewhat of a sign of depression? Not necessarily at this point, but it can turn into uh, feeling sad for longer than two weeks, which is the definition, the DSM definition of um, depression. Now the DMC, DSM is just like a career Bible, if you will, for my profession. And that's how we use, uh, that's what we use to diagnose. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, and so basically you become detached from your colleagues and your clients. Remember me telling you that I became detached? Yeah. 
Yeah. I became detached from my responsibilities. I became detached from my staff. I became detached from the clients. So no longer joyful that the clients, how many clients we have today? Like I'm always booked. I know my I'm they're gonna be there for 10 hours. But when this stage happens, how many we have? You're booked all day. Oh God, help me. <laughs> And when you're praying, you said this earlier, like when you're praying for someone to cancel like that, I, I know that feeling. Yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. And cynical, you know, that's when we're, we're, if we were talking about communication styles, that's when we are passive aggressive, where we, we're stating a message, but we are being uh, somewhat crude or possibly cruel in our message, but yet we don't want our message to come out and people to immediately see it as aggressive. So it, it could be, oh, you couldn't have, you couldn't turn that in quicker than today. <laughs> right. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. The next one, and I can go on and on with that, but the next one we'll talk about is reduced productivity. And that's clear as day, isn't it? You 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 find it difficult to concentrate and complete tasks. And that is why I had to, I, when I say had, I'm going to express had to create something that would allow me to get something done mm -hmm. in the day. And that's how the order of organization came about. I had to, because there was no other way that I was going to push myself. Mm -hmm. I just did not care, but I knew I had to do things. And you, you may also start making more mistakes than usual. Yep. It's preaching to the choir. Amen. Yep. 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 Simple things. And you start to think you're losing your mind a little bit or dementia is happening. <laughs> I wouldn't say dementia. That's a whole nother level, but I do get your point. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put those words coming from me. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, we'll, we'll continue if you would like me to. Yes. Yes. So if we're looking at the next, what comes to mind is being negative and irritable. And I've described to you that I was snappy. Ooh, I was snappy. Mm-hmm. But I also try to be quiet because I know I have a strong personality. And so I know that um, it was never my intent to intimidate anybody. It was never my intent to be passive aggressive or irritable or negative. I wasn't necessarily negative because we can weave in and out of some of these signs. Mm -hmm. I wasn't necessarily negative. I was just, how would I want to describe? Maybe it was more so of an irritability where I was a little snappy and I was less forgiving mm -hmm. and I was less tolerant of being late with uh, assignments, appointments, not, uh, answering the phones on time. I do remember that. Why is this phone ringing? <laughs> you know what I mean? Because the secretary is right at her desk. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my so goodness. you may snap at people, you know? Now I never snapped at clients. And now I, I was very intentional and conscious. If I needed to squeeze my bonds, I, if I needed to pinch myself, whatever I needed to do, I was not going to do that because you remember the story about the lady saying that I was stoic. That brought attention to me mm -hmm. and I was trying my best, trying my best not to corrupt my name. And that's why I had to make that choice, me or this business, because it was about to go down. You hear me? <laughs> yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oof. Now, in, in this phase also, when we talk about irritability, not only are you snappy at work, you're snappy at home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because when you are burned out, that's not something that you can take off like a hat and leave it at the office and lock it up as you close uh, the door. Mm -hmm. You are coming home and you are spreading that butter, if you will, all over your family and your kitchen. And so irritability and the lack of cooperation and, and being um, 
in protesting. I see that a lot in the professional women. They protest. Protest doesn't mean going downtown with your sign and marching for rights, but you're protesting. You're, you're deciding not to look at yourself in the state that you are in, but yet the symptoms are flying out left and right. And then thus you're having trouble controlling your emotions. And I'm big on teaching women about emotional control. And that's another reason why emotional intelligence came out because the Technically, when you Google emotional intelligence, um, it is it's it's specified in a part of the emotional control, but there is a separate entity regarding how to control your emotions. And so I let women know that listen, controlling your emotions is all about being intentional. Mm -hmm. So I'll move on and talk about uh, the last couple of ones that comes to mind, which is what I've already mentioned, the physical symptoms. And you, you know, you may experience physical symptoms such as headaches, like headaches coming out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Stomach aches. I think I remember having some stomach aches. And muscle tension, most definitely. And when it gets to a point that is causing you to have sleep deprivation, if yeah. you are not wondering what's going on with you at that point, then I just don't know. <laughs> You've got to be attentive of yourself. And that's one of the downfalls or of the host of culture, isn't it? Oh, just yeah. keep going. Just keep going. Yep. Yep. Don't complain. Just keep going. Just keep pushing. Just keep. Yeah. I'll sleep when I die. Yeah. That's all. Yeah, I've heard that, and that's a mess. Ain't no <laughs> lie, right? And so I'm at the point in my life that I'm cultivating peace now. Nothing can intrude my peace. And once they are finished with my program, they can move into the inner circle where I teach them about peace and how to manage it. Because now they have the basics of understanding how to get there. But we'll talk about two more because I stated that I would talk about seven. We're also going to talk about the difficulties um, disconnecting. So you'll find it hard disconnecting from work. Ooh, I remember that. <laughs> and you and you have some sort of guilt. And that's ironic. It's so crazy. It is so crazy. Yeah. Right. You feel guilty for sitting down watching a television show because multiple tasks come through your mind. You could be doing this. You could be doing that. And then it takes you, especially when you are a business, a business woman, but I believe also as an executive, your mid to high level executives, you have no sensor to where you can divide your personal and professional life because what the culture hustle says, get it done no matter what. And so you see people bringing home work and et cetera. Now, I barely brought home work. I know I had that boundary set at a very young stage of my business, but my mind would race and think about the things that I sh should be doing and thus feeling guilty. And I had to really, eat, as I was maturing through burnout and recovering, there was some residue left from some of those habits that I created as a means to protect myself to include the isolation, to include watching Hallmark movies all day long. I can tell you how many, I I probably should be a stock member for Hallmark. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, you and me both, you and me both. Yes. <laughs> so when we talk about difficulties disconnecting and we're talking about guilt, we're talking about the inability to relax. And that's that's very toxic to a woman as a human being. Yeah. And that's why I drive home self-care. The biggest part of the work that I do with the uh, uh, professional women is helping them to understand that their self-care is their soul care. I don't just talk about it as a trend. I teach them what self-care is. I teach them how to grab a hold of self-care, to understand the fundamentals of self-care, to understand that they are active activities intentionally every single day. Self-care is not just taking a day and going to the spa, that is a part of it, but it's much more than that. 
And so this individual, when we talk about not disconnecting, we all know the checking your email thing, right? Or checking your work phone. Did anybody call me? I can't miss if my boss finds out I miss. A, you know, all of these work problems, even when you're not at work. And I, I just think that that's very challenging for a lot of women until they meet me. Hi, I'm Shantae Golson, <laughs> leadership coach specializing in emotional intelligence. And then we'll talk about one more, which is the loss of sense of accomplishment. And this is when you feel like you no longer have a sense of accomplishment because you are burnt out. You are mentally exhausted. You remember me sharing with you that I resented my business? Yep. Yeah. 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 And so you may start having questions about your skills and your abilities and your talents and your future. But at the end of the day, all of it, you, you just try to wash out of your mind because you don't want to think about the state that you are in, i.e. protesting because it's hurtful. And it makes you think that you are not the strong woman that you've always been. So this is an emotional journey. And that's why I believe I'm well equipped for it because I have 30 years in mental health in which I'm trying I've transitioned over to mental wellness to coach leaders, professional women on how to gain themselves back. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's so everything you're saying is so relevant, especially, you know, in, in my my own personal life, I've been through every single seven of the signs. I've I've had them probably all at once in, in any given time throughout my career. And and so those of you who are listening and, and thinking, oh, man, maybe I am heading down this path. She is dead on, dead on as someone who's come back from burnout. She's dead on. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. And and going from mental health to mental wellness, that is a huge transition. And and I'm so glad that you're doing it because you you've got everything dialed here from what you just went through. I'm like, gosh, it's like the perfect program. So I'm like, tell us, tell us how, how do folks, you know, we take the quiz, we get connected with you. It, how else can folks find you? Are you on Instagram, LinkedIn? Get, give us all the ways that we can connect with you so I can put them in our podcast notes at drjkrausnd.com. I am everywhere. I will be honest. I focus more so on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And uh, I am on LinkedIn at The Leveling Place, mm -hmm. also Shantae Golson. Mm -hmm. And I am on YouTube. I have a YouTube dedicated just for burnout and, and having interview podcast interviews with other women in regards to burnout. And so that's at Shantae Golson on uh, YouTube. And I'm also creating a separate YouTube, which is going to chronicle my life now as semi-retired and rediscovering myself. <laughs> so lifestyle, we'll talk about, we'll talk about travels, we'll talk about experiences and just side chats about life. And that's at uh, her freedom quest which also has an accompanying blog, and they can uh, tap into that real soon, like literally in February. Okay. Okay. Oh, gosh. Yeah. I, I think watching the journey can help too, because I think for a lot of us, we sometimes need to see the visuals, but also just the good reinforcement to understand, you know, where we at, kind of put ourselves in check, maybe give ourselves a reality check and, and how important it truly is the, the self-care, I have a quote here from you about when you take care of you, everything else falls into place. Mm -hmm. And can't, can't express that enough. So, gosh, so many great things here, Shantae. I'm excited to put this podcast out and I look forward to putting all of the notes there, especially about the YouTube and for folks so they can get a hold of that. And guys, also, she has the quiz it is over at thelevelingplace.com. I will put that together for you um, in the podcast notes at drjcrossnd.com so you guys can get a hold of the quiz. Shantae, thank you so much for coming on and chatting with me about all the great work you're doing. It was a pleasure. I enjoyed it and thank you for the invitation. 
Hey, fellow health junkie, thanks for listening to the Health Fix Podcast. If you enjoyed tuning in, please help support me to get the word out about the podcast. Subscribe, rate, and review, and just get that word out. Thanks again for listening.